Lo, and welcome to Mr. C's presentation on Long Division. You've always wanted to know how to divide big numbers, and today you're going to learn. I know, it's exciting stuff. So why don't you ask it? Come on. Why do we even need to know Long Division? All right, unlike lots of other things you may learn in math, you will actually use this stuff. I use long division, like basically when I'm working with big groups, and we'll get to that in a second, but particularly with money. Cutting money up into groups, sometimes I have to use long division, especially when we're talking about decimals. We won't work with decimals today, but using decimals with long division isn't really that hard. Um, it's going to help you deal with big groups. So you got a big group, you're breaking it up into pieces, I use long division, right? Um, let me give you an example. Okay, so let's say my library bookshelf in my classroom has eight shelves, and I have like 2,457 books, right? I want to divide it up into eight shelves. How many are going to be on each shelf? I might actually use long division for that, um, and you might too in the future. Anyways, let's do it. So I'm going to play with some of my technological smarts. I think I know how to do this. Um, I may be expanding and contracting myself as the video goes on, but let's start right here uh, at the first problem. I'm gonna give you two problems. This is 4,263 divided by three. Now, I know there's other ways to do long division, but I'm gonna show you the way that I learned when I was your age or whatever. The way I learned when I was first learning how to do it, okay? Maybe you're older than I was, maybe you're younger than I was, doesn't really matter. This is how I learned how to do long division. So I take the number that's being divided, 4,263, and I put it underneath this little house thing. I, I do not know what this is called, but I do know that it stands for divide by, or uh, divide, like basically divide this number by this number out here, okay? So this guy, I, th I always think of him as like knocking on the door or something, I don't know why, but this guy's standing outside this little division hut, and then the number you're dividing is inside, okay? All right, so you ready? Now, this is where I'm gonna kinda mess with my picture. It might help to cover up the number here, okay? So, I'm gonna slide over digit by digit, starting with the largest place value. So I'm gonna start in the thousands place, ready? So, I have three, and then here I can see my four. And I should think, how many times does three go into four? Well, if you can skip count, you know that that answer is only once. Because one times three is what? Three. Write that right below, okay? Now I'm gonna subtract, right? I'm gonna take four, and I'm gonna subtract three. Okay, so this is kind of a weird process. Back this up if you need to see that again. Four minus three is one. And I know I got the right answer up here. If three, or the number that's outside the little division hut, does not go into the number that's down here. So I've done well so far, okay? So now, I'm gonna move my head over. Now you can see this two. Well, this two is gonna drop down, hang out next to this one. So now, I have 12, okay? So I should be thinking, how many times does three go into 12? Well, that goes in evenly. I'm a good skip counter, and I know that four times three is 12. Okay, so now I subtract these. Well, that's easy, 12 minus 12, nothing. All right, so now I move my head over again. See the six? Six is gonna fall down here. Right, I'm dealing with zero, six. Well, if there's nothing in the tens place, then this number is just six. How many times does three go into six? You got it. It goes in twice. I write it up here, see? So two times three is six. Whoa, this is not so hard. Six minus six is zero, right? Now I move my head over one more time. I have a three, the three falls all the way down here. See how I'm writing the little arrows when the numbers fall down? I'm having them fall down one at a time. And then I'm actually doing, these, these have been pretty easy because three goes into these numbers evenly. How many times does three go into three? Durr, one time. One times three is three. Three minus three is 
zero. Let's move my head over. Oh, no more numbers. I'm done. So the question 4,263 divided into three groups. Each one of those groups is going to have 1,421. So 4,263 4, divided by three is 1,421. Or 1,421 times three equals 4,263. Cool, and there's no remainder, because look, there's zero down there. Remainder? What's a remainder, Mr. C? I'm gonna erase this. Back it up if you need to see it again, okay? Because we're gonna go on to the second problem, which I have purposefully made a remainder for. Remainder, I'm scared. Don't be scared, it'll all be okay. Okay, so let's make my little division hut. Six, seven, a three, divided by, hey, hey, we're inside the house. Oh, poor little 12. Anyways, I, that wasn't even funny. Okay, so let's expand my head again. I'm covering up every number, and let's move over one place. Okay, now, this causes a problem. How many times does 12 go into six? Uh, it doesn't. So what do I do? Nothing. Just slide over one more space. Watch, I'll slide my head over again. Okay, now I have 67. All right, I get it. I'm taking both of these numbers together, 67. Does 12 go into 67? Yup. How many times? Well, I am a great skip counter. I know all my multiplication tables. So I know that 12 times five is 60. 12 times 6 is 72. Well, that's too big. So I have to go with the smaller one, which is 5. Now notice, I put that 5 over the 7, not over the 6. It's not really important, but I like to keep it lined up that way because it helps me to remember where I left off in division sometimes. And you can get confused if you don't. Anyways, I know that 5 times 12 is 60. Okay, so I'm going to write that 60 right here. Okay, let's do my subtractions. What's seven minus zero? Seven, and what's six minus six? Zero. Okay, so I have seven left over. All right, let's shift my head over again. All right, here's a three. Let's drop it down, right? Because we know the 12 doesn't go into seven. Seven's too small. So we need another digit. Now we have a 73. All right, well, how many times does 12 go into 73? Ooh, I can get close. 12 times six is 72, right? 6 times 12 is 72. That's not too big. It's actually really close. Because if I went one higher, went with 7, 7 times 12, that's 84. That's too big. So I'll stick with 72. All right, I get as close as I can without going over. And then do my subtractions. 3 minus 2 is 1. 7 minus 7 is 0. All right, let's slide my head over another space. <gasps> There's nothing there. Wait a minute. We have a 1 left down here. Aha! That is the remainder that I'm talking about. Let me spell that word. R-E-M-A-I-N-D-E-R. -E -E remainder. Say it. Remainder. Now, the remainder has to be smaller than the number you're dividing by. Okay? And ours is. Our remainder is 1. And the number we're dividing by is 12. So we have a good remainder. Now, like if this remainder were 13, that'd be too big. We screwed something up. That would mean that one of the numbers up here is wrong. So you have to go back and fix it and get closer to the number that you're trying to um, subtract from. Okay, so that's our remainder. So the answer to this problem would be 56 remainder 1. And remainders are written with an R. I wrote it in red. I should write it in black so that you can see that you would write it along with the rest of the problem. Okay, it's 56 remainder 1. There's one left over. You could also, if you wanted to get crazy smart with this, you could say it was 56 and 1 twelfth. Oh, right? You take that remainder and put it in the numerator, and then you take the number you're dividing by and put it in the denominator. Cool, huh? Yeah. Uh, anyways, um, and you'll learn how to do this in decimals later uh, and in the future. If you need to back this up and check out either one of these, I encourage you to. It's definitely something you're going to have to practice with. Maybe even ask some questions about to somebody else that might know how. Okay? Uh, but that's all I got for you. Let's just quickly talk about what we learned. We learned some important things. We learned that knowing factors, skip counting, subtracting, multiplication, they're all in long division. 
Okay, you got to know your multiplication facts. Uh, I told you that a while ago. All right, got to know how to subtract. Here it is again. Okay, got to know how to subtract. And, you know, uh, skip counting helps. Lots of other multiplication and division skills. All coming together in long division. Uh, secondly, long division is going to help us break things up into groups. All right, it's going to let us know how we're going to take big numbers, divide them into smaller groups, and then figure out how much is in each of those groups. Um, Plus, if you were paying attention, it's pretty repetitive. You do the same stuff, right? You figure out a good multiple or a good factor, right? And then you multiply, and then you subtract, and then you drop a number down, and then you figure out a good multiple, and then you multiply, and then you subtract, and then you drop a number down, and then you figure out a good multiple, and then you multiply, and... Then you subtract, and then you bring a number down. And you, you just keep doing that until you finally run out of numbers. And then you either have a remainder or you have an exact answer. It's a very repetitive process. You might, you might be kind of bored with it, but it's going to be useful if you learn how to do it. Okay? All right. Got to try it. Here we go. Let's do a couple problems. I want you to try these ones. If you have to check with the calculator, go ahead. Uh, the first two I'm going to give you do not have remainders. So if they wind up with a remainder, you did something wrong. 119 divided by 7. All right? Give it a shot. The second one, a little bigger, a little more challenging, 6,330 divided by 5. And then the last one, this one does have a remainder. That's why I wrote it in red. Red for remainder. Uh, 6,840 divided by 13. Um, if you check your last one with a calculator, you'll get a decimal. Um, so you might want to ask somebody who knows how to do long division what the remainder should be if you can't check it yourself. Or you can just be confident that, hey, if there's a remainder there, you got a good chance of getting it right. Whatever works for you. Um, but practice, practice, practice. Keep on trying. Um, it might take you a while to master this, but that is a good thing. That means your brain is growing. You're actually learning stuff. All right. See you next time.